Hey guys, welcome back to the final episode of the Celica build. As you can see, the last thing uh, we've done is the roll cage. Um, this has been a monumental project, like maybe you don't realize it when you look at this car, but it's been a lot of work. Um, just to keep it real short, we fitted the Toyota 3S GTE engine and four-wheel drive system from an earlier model. So this is called an ST230. The other model is an ST205. They have a GT4 version of that and a GT4 front subframe, rear subframe, uh, differential, front axle, uh, the super strut system, which is a very special uh, way of dealing with torque steer on front wheel drive cars. And that turbo engine has all been fitted to this car. It's all been difficult. Nothing has been easy. Um, we're doing this project for another company. This company builds mostly motors and stuff. They specialize in R35 GTRs. This is their client and they asked us to basically build this chassis. Um, as you can see behind me, we've blocked off the firewall and the reason for that, as you can see these little tubes there, that's where the um, rear axle sits these days. So that's the part where the um, rear axle meets the, the chassis now. Normally that's where the tank is sitting because under that lid that's normally the fuel pump. So we had to move the tank out back and because of that we had to make um, a an extra firewall. You can see the cage. It's not a super easy car to do a cage on because it sits on that edge like a 350Z and all those kinds of cars. Makes it a little bit more difficult for us to drop the cage to weld it completely. I think this looks super cool that this door bar extends into this chassis brace. As you can also see, we had to be sort of civil with the door bars. We couldn't swing them way out like we like to do because this client really wanted to keep his door panels. It's kind of a weird car because um, it has to stay road legal. Um, I don't know for how long people are gonna keep up with that, but it's one of those difficult things. It's not easy to build a car that's good for the racetrack and good uh, on the road. Um, so yeah, let me show you guys some things that we've done. I think it came out really cool. I'm kind of happy with it. Really proud of my guys. I think they all did a really good job working on this car. Um, I understand that this was the client's dream car. Obviously, everybody has their dream cars. Maybe not everybody has a Celica 2001 model as dream car, but I really respect that somebody has a dream and sticks to it. Um, I think it's gonna be a really cool car when it's finished. Uh, what I understand from people that really know their stuff is that the front geometry of the suspension is really good. We were able to get that exactly the same as it is in the ST205. Um, one big problem with it that we couldn't get a left-hand drive steering rack. So um, we had a different Toyota rack which kind of resembled it, but the fitment was nowhere near it. But the geometry of the rack, like um, how short it is and how much it extends when you turn it lock to lock, is kind of similar. So we think this will work. Um, yeah, so it's one of those things. So this took a lot of work to get this right. Um, we had to Frankenstein a lot of components together. It was all very a little bit off. So it was almost it was almost going to work, but then it was like binding or I was not really happy with the trajectory or it was like almost binding. Um, now it's not, as, as you can see, there's no bolts or nothing in it, like except those bolts over there on top, but they're not really, um, uh, they're not fixed. Um, we didn't torque them, so they're still loose. And on the bottom, there's no bolts in it at all. As you can see over there, that's where another bolt is gonna come. So I'm really happy the way it, it's very smooth. Um, it's a really good steering feel to it. So I, that was a really big challenge. The room under there is needed for the differential to uh, go under. You can see you're really happy with the cage, like the way it sits in the car, kind of nice and tight. Um, of course, we had to keep the A-pillars away from um, the cage a little bit, because otherwise we would have problems with uh, putting that A-pillar over there um, in order to make sure that the door panel still fitted. A uh, nice thing about this model is that it sits really high on the um, rear strut tower, so we can use this bar as um, uh, the bar for the harness, which is usually with BMW, it comes out way too low. I also think that this is very nice, so that's a, a really uh, strong piece, so as you can see. Um, so as you can see, 
show you guys around to do what we've done. I made the cage, the main structure, the main hoop and the sections that extend from the B to the A pillar. Then it gets dropped. So we remove the 3D feet and then we weld the top of the cage and bring it back up. Here you can see how we are bracing that rear subframe into the roll cage. Don't forget to take a look at our website as well, einzel.nl. We ship worldwide, of course, Wisefab, Feel Suspension, our own brand Einzel, gearboxes, quick change differentials, axles, all kinds of things. A lot of fabrication components, of course, air jacks, subframes for quick change, you name it. Drop us an email and we'll hook you up. We always spend a lot of time making these boxes um, so that it sits on the sill and not only on the floor. There you can see some reinforcements that we made for the subframe. And that's where the new pickup points for the rear subframe are sitting in the car. So those locate, that's basically where the rear axle now sits. That's also why we couldn't mount the original tank anymore. And there you can see that we closed off um, the area between the luggage compartment and the driver the door panel could still go on like you need to change it a little bit but that's all the space we had for that and we mounted the fuel cell up here the way i usually do it is that i make um that's difficult to tell so i make four plates that sit on each corner of the fuel cell um, down there so it cannot go anywhere. You need to incorporate a little bit of room because the tanks can actually expand a little bit. This is just a secondhand uh, tank that we used for fitting it and everything. Um, it's probably gonna get a new tank when the car is completely finished. And then uh, we welded these pretty solid bushings onto the floor of the car and put uh, the correct uh, strength bolt in, the bolt in there. Here's another view of how we closed off this compartment so there's going to be a little window over here a Lexon window where um, that's going to be closed off from the rest as you have uh, seen in the other videos we made this whole uh, section because the original shocks are very low on this model so we had to extend it all the way up uh, and it's also very important where this point sits and you can just put it anywhere because it's uh, McPherson rear so it means that you're um, going to be affecting the stance of the wheel by that. So that's basically how that ended up. Some more, it's a driving position. And the next step is the engine and all that stuff that's gonna be uh, rebuilt. I'm kind of happy how it came out after a lot of small problems. So it was almost impossible to find uh, the steering rack. Um, and finally we made that steering rack fit. And uh, yeah, so it kind of steers well. Uh, the geometry all checks out very well as you can see the wheels sit very nicely in the arches um, yeah it's always nice things to check these builds like if you've done the right job that this is a, the harness bar is completely parallel with that um, firewall that we made and there you can see that these pickup points for the rear subframe are also completely parallel with those things which is always a very nice visual confirmation of what you're doing because we made these things basically from zero got a whole lot was already cut out because somebody had attempted to do something about that before us um, and all these little things like this little frame like it's so much work to make all that little stuff it's a little bit dusty but um, yeah, so I'm kind of happy how that came out. Another fun fact is this panel that we made over here. It was it's completely different than the panel that sits over there, and it's like production tolerance. So you can tell that it's supposed to be the same. So it's not like non-symmetrical like some cars, 
um, it's just production tolerances. Um, so we had to make two different ones for left and right. So a lot of work went into this trunk. Pretty tight fitment here on the roof, so the painter is going to remove all this. Um, we already removed so much more stuff from this car. Um, basically, when we do a roll cage, we ask people to completely strip the car. Like everything needs to be stripped from the car. Um, apparently, that didn't really communicate too well because this car still had a lot of wiring and stuff in it. Most of the stuff you see over there, we took out and put back in. It's just one of those things like with these projects, you need to be really, really clear. And people think that stripping a car for one guy is completely different than stripping a car for another guy. You need to have cars that are like really, really stripped. That is um, how stripped a car should be um, for a roll cage. So nothing should be in that car at all. Um, no headline or stuff or whatever because everything you do in a car once the roll cage is in is difficult Hope you guys enjoyed our job so far on the Celica and let me know in the comments if you do